you think that you base your experiences in business uh, on your experiences as a boy in Petticoat Lane Market? Yeah. So do you want to talk a bit about that and how well, that yeah, experience is Yeah, retailing, inspired? selling was in my blood at a very young age. I was taken down to uh, Petticoat Lane in the East End with my father and uh, I was fascinated by the fact that some of the stalls had huge crowds around them and some of them were just completely empty and the ones that were did have the crowds had the patter and they did in those days they did a whole spiel about um, and they used humor and stuff like that and um, they used to just make supposedly fantastic offers at ridiculously low prices um, and I felt that was the basis for retailing is you cannot be a wallflower uh, you can't be shy you have to scream out from the rooftops everything you're doing that's what selling is about so in the shops um, I had lots of posters lots of offers sandwich boards music playing uh, one promotion after the other very aggressive um, because that is what I felt was going to succeed in retailing is to shout louder than the guy next door so you think you were sort of in, immersed in business then like really really young age in a way do you yeah. think that not and not enough of that happens sort of nowadays with with kids in the world I of business do. i do i think that the danger of going to university is that you come out and you think that you can go in middle management or above and start ordering people about and running things but there's no substitute for actually starting at the bottom. Somebody who runs a restaurant said to me he'd rather have somebody who works in the kitchen to put the bins out at two o'clock in the morning than somebody who strolled in uh, at the age of 25 from university uh, in, a, in a nice suit, um, spoken nicely, and really doesn't know what, what it's about. Because, I mean, I worked in the shop behind the counter and I could look the manager in the face because of that, because I understood it. Uh, and the danger is that you can't skip those, er that er those early years and come in and think that you know it all because you've got a degree. Mm. I, I won't make you talk through the whole story that you've just spoke through on stage, but what, for sort of a small business entrepreneur watching this, what, what do you think are the, the, the key lessons that they can take from, from the experiences that you have? since the speech? Well, what I've learned, and it took me a long time to learn it, is that business is full of setbacks, as life is full of setbacks. You don't sail through without some rubbish being thrown in your direction. And it's the way that you deal with those setbacks, rather than give up. Um, you have to learn from them and make sure you don't make them again, and you'll be a better manager for it. So. I was at a very low point, as I explained in my speech, in a rather jokey, self-deprecating way, but there is a serious underlying message there. Um, for seven years I was in the wilderness, in my bedroom, I didn't want to leave my bedroom. Uh, I believed everything that was said about me in the press. So it's important to know that you can come back, that you will be knocked back in life and in business. Uh, but that is the route to success, failure. Uh, if you overcome that, you'll be a lot happier and a lot more successful. And if I can come back from the low point that I was in, and back in the jewellery business as well, um, then anybody can come back, my friend. And here I am doing lots of speeches. I was regarded as the person who did the worst speech of all time. Yeah, I'm making a nice sideline and living out of making speeches. So, uh, it is ironic. Know, yeah. Um, you've had a bit of success in the States, and we hear a lot of talk about that the, the, the US deal with failure a lot better. Like they, There's all this talk about if you go to a US VC and you haven't had a failure, they won't yes. invest. Yeah. Do you think Britain does have a problem with perception and failure? I do. I think that they just look at it in a black and white way and uh, write you off uh, if you've had a failure. They just say, well, he's a proven failure, he won't succeed. But some of those failures are uh, a lot better for it because they've learned a hell of a lot of lessons. And in, in America, uh, they don't really take you seriously um, unless you've been around the block a few times. And uh, one of the best things you can do is what they call Chapter 11, which is basically you've gone bust. Uh, <laughs> they even put a gloss on it. They say, oh, I was in Chapter 11. It was the best thing I ever did and stuff like that. It shouldn't be 
a stigma to have lost everything. You know, that is the nature of the beast. Um, the secret of success is the capacity to survive failure. And uh, if you look at a lot of the top entrepreneurs over the last 50 years, they've been that close to going bust, the best ones. Uh, and they've become the best because of that setback. So now Gerald Online is, you know, very successful. What, what do you think are the key reasons why, why it's worked? I think that our timing of going onto the internet uh, early on, getting a good spot on Google, 2003, when a lot of people were not looking at the internet. Um, so I think that uh, the fact that I have stuck to one particular field, jewellery, uh, and I've even though I've been doing it for 45 years, I've struggled enough with that. So God knows what it'd be like if I diversified into some other area. I'm not a jack of all trades. Uh, I've concentrated on a particular field, which is jewellery, and uh, not tried to be um, arrogant enough to believe that I can conquer any particular business. Uh, business is very difficult, and there's a lot of people that go into the jewellery business, and I can see that they make loads of basic errors. I mean, we always display, when we had shots, we always displayed a diamond ring 42 inches from the ground, because the average woman was five foot four and the trajectory of her eye would fall at 42 inches, so it's the perfect point. Basic things like that, that you see people who don't know anything about the industry come in and, and screw up. So it's nothing, there's not, it's not rocket science, as they say, it's just getting the basics right. Uh, and uh, I just feel that somebody who goes into every different business is not going to succeed.